Mystery Samar, 25 years old, from Troy, New York, you know, the 518. Um, and I guess that my audience is just like other people like me that like to go be out in nature and find peace in nature, but then also further than that, like looking into where that brings us and like that sort of like our future is in our backyard. But being outside has always been huge for me. Um, you know, going to an environmental camp when I was young and then just like always just wanting to be outside, loving camping, going kayaking. Um, I feel like an appreciation for mushrooms definitely came the last few years, but my love of outside has always been there. Um, even if it didn't like directly reflect in my artwork, um, I would still like when I was just doing like pattern drawing, they usually would sit down after taking like a nice long hike or like nice long walk. And even though, you know, I didn't see those patterns while I was walking, there was something about what I did that day that inspired the textures and like the, the lines that I would use. I kind of like mixing in, um, like this like surreal element to my art, uh, as well as more of like, I wouldn't say that I am as good as a photorealist creator, but sort of like mixing in what you would see um, out in nature, but then also um, like I like to add a lot of sort of like eyes and teeth onto things, but it, it it's more than just like this sort of like slightly scary off-putting image. It, it kind of like delves into like a reminder of like these things are also like alive too. And you can't deny that when something is looking at you, <laughs> when you give it eyes, it, it makes it feel far more alive to people. So do you think that your stuff would be creepy to some people or? Oh yeah, no, definitely. Some people are unnerved by it, while as like others don't question it and they just love it. Okay. You know how like Andy's toy box, like when Andy's gone in Toy Story, all the all the toys like have their own life it's kind of what i do to nature like if we weren't there like what are these things doing when we're not there like the teeth they bear the eyes they hide you know the the weird arms that they have underneath you know <laughs> i started off mostly using like pen and ink um but i do prefer to paint and use water-based paints especially um, because uh, a lot of water-based paints like wash and uh, watercolors, um, you can find that they're all natural earth material too, which sort of like brings in like a different element into what you're painting because not all pigments are natural anymore. A lot of them are, are synthetic, which I'll still use synthetic, but you have a lot more options with water-based mediums. Considering myself an artist is much more recent, because um, I think that there's like a, a level of, I don't know, proud each person has to make themselves before they feel as though that they can call themselves an artist. Um, but art that looks like what I've been making recently has sort of started in the last few years, um, although it's definitely always been in the back of my head. but you know, you overcome sort of like your own uh, limitations that you put on yourself. And then one day you say, I'm gonna start making the art that I've always wanted to make instead of just thinking about it. <laughs> Creative process. I mean, it usually starts with you know, something that I see that inspires me. Um, and then my mind does different weird things to it. Uh, starts to add things on that maybe weren't there before. Or I see like, sometimes like patterns and things. Um, so, you know, through the years, I think that my creative process has turned a lot into uh, my own photograph references. Um, I 
guess another part of my creative process too would be uh, like a lot of things I read and listen to as well. Like I kind of don't listen to as much music anymore. Listen to a lot of audiobooks and a lot of podcasts. Um, but they tend to be a lot of storytelling ones. So even if it's not sort of like a direct um, inspiration, there's like elements of it that I'm inspired by. And that definitely gets added in. Okay. So would you say that your work might tell a story without words that maybe you, in your creative process, is there a story being told in your imagination? Yeah, I think that not every piece has a story. Some pieces just, you have to like get an image out of your brain and you don't know where it came from or why it's there, but you got to get it out of your head. But there's definitely a story with other stuff, definitely. Um, whether it's something that happened to me actually in person or it's something I listened to. Uh, you know, another creative story that inspired me. Interesting. Now, do you have um, a piece that might indicate, like, some story that you'd like to share? Or do you like to keep your the stories secret? I do, sort of. I will tell some people, like, the story behind a piece, but then others I don't because I love hearing what someone's own personal interpretation of something may be because sometimes it has, it's something I would have never thought of at all because of the story that I had written in my head for it. To hear what someone else says about it is so interesting. <laughs> That every piece can't be perfect and you have to be okay with the imperfections or you're you're gonna have trouble moving forward like um, you can there's certain things in life you can't control but like not every little mistake you can't control so I think that like creating art and allowing myself someone who tended to sometimes get upset when I was younger with like imperfections that I thought I could control it allowed me to be more forgiving with myself, you know? Even even with my my more symmetrical pattern pieces that I've done, um, it can't be perfectly symmetrical. Everything is asymmetry, even if someone's eyes are tricked into seeing no mistakes. Like, I as the creator, I see the imperfections, but I learn to accept them, you know? Through, through that, it sort of allowed me to accept the imperfections in other art forms and mediums, too. Um, cause our eyes do help, you know, desserts can taste good, but them looking delicious is also, you know, adds to how delicious they are. <laughs> do you have a favorite piece that you have done? Hmm. Yeah, I think I have like a couple favorite pieces. Um, never made prints of them, you know, kind of just like paintings I have. And they're actually paintings that I've made like a couple versions of some of them. Because like every couple of years, like I, I take the concept and I do it again. Because I, I like to see sort of like how far I've come in the couple of years and like we'll compare. Like there's another painting I'm due to redo actually, but um, my, the one form is like one of my favorites though that I've ever done. But yeah, I got a few. I got a few different videos. You're saying, is this the only parking spot? Or? Um, we've got a little bit more. Oh, is this the lookout to Lansing Brook Ice? Yeah. We can go to the chain first. blanket over there. I'm bringing you the back way. The back way into the cemetery. But this is where I find like the craziest mushrooms. It's so close to other people but yet you feel like you are not near anybody at all. Uh, well creating art like especially you know, in the last handful of years as a, uh, it gives me peace. So that's something that sort of promotes me to work on it. Um, sometimes it's something that allows my mind to calm down with like the thousands of things that are going on. 
and when it stops bringing me peace for a period of time, that's usually when I take, like, a creative break. Um, because, you know, if I'm not doing it for me, then I'm not doing art for the right reason. This is, this is the time of the year that the mealy pixie cups start popping up. So I found a little bit of lichen, which is algae and mold, sort of like combined in, you know, the perfect, perfect atmosphere. This is a, a mealy pixie cup lichen. So what this does is it, it kind of looks like a Shrek horn for a while, and then it flowers and opens up, and then it becomes this like crinkly part underneath. This is its fruiting body. And those start to pop up like crazy in the springtime. So when you're out specifically in nature, is there something that you're looking for when you're out there to inspire you? Yes, a lot of mushrooms. Heavily inspired by mushrooms. Um, there is an abundance of species in the area that I live in. And, you know, I essentially have a super forest in my backyard. Um, so I am always, like, down squatting, getting super close to the ground, because sometimes, you know, the mushrooms that you see are so, so tiny that you really have to be paying attention to the simplest pops of color and texture to see something like that. And even if I don't draw that exact mushroom, the texture of it might inspire something that I add into like my next piece. But definitely like a lot of, a lot of mushrooms because they come in all various shapes and sizes. Even the same species can have color variations and they will arrive just as quickly as they're gone. So you really have to appreciate them while they're there. So I can't tell if this is the beginnings or the end of what is known as a black trumpet horn. Um, they grow at the base of trees, usually um, in a specific area, and they uh, connect the root systems of the trees with other root systems of trees that are of similar species so that they can interact and talk to each other and send signals in case there's a blight coming um, or there's a lack of nutrition or water. These ones are actually edible too. And they look super beautiful in their prime. This is not their prime. They really look like little trumpets coming out of the ground though. They're so cute. Oh, and Amanda, the remnants of ghost pipes. So this is a plant that relies on mycelium in order to grow. Without the fungus that this plant, it's usually white in the summertime and they grow up uh, with little yellow middles. And they, they do, they look little little uh, pipes. But uh, they, yeah, they're fully reliant on the mycelium that connects with them in order to actually grow. They don't produce any chlorophyll of their own. You're creative. You always find ways to be creative in every aspect of your life. So like my, my I would call it my nine to five job. I'm a baker and then a uh, wedding planner's assistant. So um, it's not like what I do is directly replicated. Like I'm not creating paintings and drawing at work, but you know, that attention to detail necessary when you're creating, you know, like desserts for weddings and like decorating them. And then like that attention to detail um, and that creative side when you're like um, designing a wedding and, you know, sitting down and being like, okay, this is, based off of what the style of this person is. This is the stuff we're gonna use for it because this will match with sort of like what they want. So it's not, I guess it's not like a direct influence, but it's hard not to be creative everywhere when, you know, it's a huge part of who you are. I will seek out inspiration in other areas. Um, although right now, I think that my, my most comfortable sort of like space to create is within like nature elements. Who knows what it will be like in the future though. Because this is just a certain portion, you know. I may I may never paint another mushroom again for the rest of my life after a few years. Although I doubt that, but
What is it about mushrooms in nature that you find so interesting? I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of what to start with first. <clears throat> um, is that too loaded of a question? <laughs> well, I, yeah, because it's not, because hmm. like I, there's the cordyceps element of it mm. where like, you know, um, cordyceps definitely gave me this, like, I always thought mushrooms were cool, but learning about cordyceps definitely made me dive into sort of like the science about mushrooms a little bit more. Um, I've always been interested in sort of like the creepy and the morbid as well, so, you know, my brain has always sort of dived into if there's this parasitic fungus for all of these species of insects that exist on Earth because there's like an over overpopulation of them, it's there to control, you know, what's to say that, you know, that couldn't happen to mammals in the future, you know, my brain starts to like dive into things like that. Um, and then you know, through learning about cordyceps and reigniting my, my desire to learn about nature and specifically mushrooms, you know, I learned about how mushrooms are going to be hugely important too to our green environment in the future because of all the products that we use to combat, you know, oil spills and pollutions and uh, even nuclear waste. Um, mushrooms are the one thing that tried and true doesn't care what kind of carbon it is can give you new life in a year. Although it might be an oyster mushroom. I don't always know unless something is in sort of its prime fruiting body. Also, I don't have my knife with me. Because in order to properly identify mycelium and fruiting bodies and stuff like that, you actually have to look at the top of them, the bottom of them, and then what they look like in the middle and whether or not they bleed. Some of them turn black like a like bruising. So the minute that you, you touch it and poke it, it turns black in that area. I'm pretty sure that this one up here is an oak maize gill, which um, is a much hardier one. And so it's one that you can actually pick before it spores and bring inside your house as decoration. Yep, because it's like, it's almost like the consistency of bark when you touch it. The reason I, another reason I became so heavily inspired by cordyceps and why like I sort of like attached it as like a handle to like me as an artist is because like cordyceps, aside from being this very cool morbid thing, it's a parasitic fungus that attacks the brain of an insect and then forces them to travel to a location in which the spores won't just be able to infect as many insects at once, but it also will be able to produce as many spores as possible. Um, it literally controls the mind of an insect, and we know currently about 400 species that exist. Um, we know that there's probably more though, because there's an endless amount of insects on our world. Um, but aside from this morbid thing that cordyceps do, Cordyceps also are the reason we have some MS medicines. Um, they, they've been known to, you know, promote your brain to work essentially like at its best. Um, there's a lot of medicines that can be traced back to cordyceps. What do you want your art to inspire others to do? Go outside. Like even if it doesn't inspire you to create art, like go outside and like learn about what's in your backyard and what's in your neighborhood. Um, what's happened environmentally, you know. I definitely learned about some stuff that happened in my morning that, you know, yeah, just go outside though. Go walk around. Even if you don't create art, there's art all around you. And it might inspire you to be creative in other ways because there's traditional mediums and then there's all that other good stuff that exists.
Well, that's it's what a minute too long. That's what editing's for. Okay, so I'm gonna set up something. You can actually take them and dry them inside your house. I'm not recording yet, so I can't yeah, hear I'm you. Yeah, I'm prepping. <laughs>